Yeah. Look at these guys over here, like, I'm too cool. I'll drink my coffee on the outside. I don't want to go on the inside. I'm going to hide. You can't get your awards. Set it on the outside. All right, how are we doing, Zoom? Someone soon to say hi on Zoom. Intep will say hi. He always comes through when I put him on the spot. Thanks, Intep. I appreciate you. I heard you. Loud and clear. Where are we at in our volume here? All right, let's get started, guys. We got a, a jam pack full of day. We got some fun. Uh, we're gonna obviously start with our our on track fun, and then we're gonna have some heavyweight battles. It's gonna be a lot of good time. So let's welcome up Shauna. Let's get started with some fun. Welcome, Shauna. Yay! Closest without going over, over, and you can't cheat. Yeah. Zoom. Cheating. Zoom. We're watching you. So the first one we have is West Lancaster. It's four bedrooms, two baths, built in 1953, 1,100 square feet. Ooh, nice little. On a 6127 square foot house. Look at that garage. It's a nice little garage Yeah. You can put your little Mini Cooper in there. Oh yeah, you are here to talk about that. That was the right move. Yeah. Um, is that tile? Carpet? Is that like an old court sale hall? Is that, what is this? West Lancaster. That's off of J. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like West Lancaster. Oh, it's cute. Oh, it's cute. It's right there by Mark, uh, New York. Yeah. They used to be called Mark I don't know what's called that. Elementary. I would say. All right, what do you got, Bryce? What do we got? 429. 429. 425, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, 430, Scroll up. No, it's okay. I didn't participate. I said on the low. Oh, no, he's at 527. He's on the You got 305? We got a winner. Okay, we got the winner. Look at that. One dollar, Bob, was the winner. That's the first time we've had that happen. One dollar, Bob. Raise your hand if you gotta yell one dollar Bob before or one dollar Drew. You gotta do it. Bob. I gotta do Drew. It was awesome. Did you win? You didn't win. Oh, let's see, I'm a winner. Anyways, I'm just kidding. All right, next one is West Palmdale. It's four bedrooms, two baths. Built in 1994. It's 1,600 square feet on a 7,000 square foot lot. It's a nice. Whoa. Oh, that's nice. It's like a Game of Thrones castle thing going on. Country charm. Country? I get more like like medieval. Look at the arch. That's an arch. I don't know how I feel about the arch, to be honest. Uh, what are we thinking out there? Guys, we have the whole front seat open. Don't be scared. We're not going to pick on you up there. 520, 500. We have food today, we're dismissing the front row to go eat first, so... That's John sitting up front. Alright, here we go. Actual retail price is... One more slide away! Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Emily had 495. She was close on Zoom. Nice. Poor Isabel. 3,000 off. 3,000 off. I know that area is like. Hey, you got it exactly right. You got to give them $500 out of your pocket. Oh, sure. $100 off Cutco. $100 off Cutco. That's a good deal right there. All right, class house on the list. That's a good deal, by the way. Okay. Alright, this is it. This is the last, one. last chance to be a big winner. Oh, your bedroom three bath, built in 2006, 3,400 square foot lot. On a cold sack, oh. RV parking. Look at that little parking door. That's cool. Oh, there's a lot of cool. Oh, that's cool. What a cool. Oh, is that off 70? Why? It's east or west? No, no. Is this east or west? I thought that was like East Lake. East Lake. It's like 30. Wow. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
flow? How does the flow feel? Are they getting stuck? Can you tell that they're uncomfortable? How's that flow? Building rapport. Are they building rapport? Are they making this person feel like they're comfortable? Or are they just have commission breath? Structure, does it look like they're searching for something or does it seem like they're actually practicing scripts and they've said this a thousand times? And then of course the statement, what are they actually saying? Did they just pick something out of the thin air and said, hey, I'm gonna go with this or is this something that they've actually practiced over and over again? So we're gonna ask for your guys' help, listen for those. Are you guys on board? Yeah. 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 Okay, great. So let's get it started. Uh, we'll, we will call up the first person. Mike, can you cue the music please? Oh! Alright! Coming from East Palm, Dad! We have the greatest Portillo! His objection handlers are so slick, he makes medicine sick. So guys, remember, look for tonality, flow, rapport, structure, and statement, okay? So the way we're going to do it is we'll start with Isabel. Ladies first, she will give an objection. Clara, you will handle that objection. And then we're going to go to Jason next, and Wendell will give you an objection, Jason. Um, and it might not be one statement. They might ask some follow-up questions, so they may role play with you. Okay, Wendell? Okay, Isabel? Okay. All right. So Isabel, what is the first objection for Clara? Well, Clara, I think that right now the rates are just too high. Well, you know, Isabel, I can understand that you'd be concerned about the rates, but you know, right now there's so many opportunities for the seller can provide some um, help to, in order to bring down the, your interest rate. So that way it would make it much easier. So wouldn't you, would you like that? Yeah, I would like that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Jason, Jason, you know, the way I'm looking at things right now, it's, the prices are just too high. Now, I want to wait. I want the market to drop. You want the market to drop. Okay, Window, can you tell me a little bit more? What are you looking for in the market? Well, I want the interest rate to be back to 2%. <laughs> <laughs> Payments, what's important to you, right? To have something that's probably Payments important. are important. Yeah. It's important, you're right. Um, and, you know, there's good opportunities in today's market, even with the rates going up, there's a lot less competition. And as soon as the rates drop, we're gonna see a lot more buyers and to pull. If I could show you how, with the less competition, we get you in a home that's gonna be a payment comfortable for you. Would that work for you? Yes, that would work for me. Cool, let's meet today at five. Sound good? Sound good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you, Wendell. All right, so just a second, guys. We are going to vote. So who votes for Clara in the blue corner? Just go ahead and give her a cheer. And now we have Jason in the red corner. Let's go ahead and Like, hey, what would I say? <laughs> okay, 
right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next contestants. Fighting out of the red corner, we have... In the blue corner, we have. This is my favorite one. We have Keyshawn. What Bone Crusher wants, Bone Crusher gets. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Sean, could you help us pick an objection, please? And then Tom, could you help us pick one? Um, okay, guys, so you know the rules? We're all set? Okay, Shauna, could you please give uh, Andrew an objection? Okay, um, let's see. Um, Andrew, at this time, I think I want to rent instead of buying a home. Okay, tell me a little bit more about that. What makes you want to rent? Well, the prices are so high and the interest rates are so high, and my rent is only eighteen hundred a month. Okay, so it looks, sounds like you're looking for a rental around that eighteen hundred dollar range. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, well, if we're able to find you a home in that uh, price range with the monthly payment that you're comfortable with, is that something you'd be interested in looking into? It really just depends. I'm really so concerned about the 7% interest rate. Yeah, totally. You know, interest rates are on the rise. We do see them going up more in the near future. But um, we can sit down. We can explore your options of what it would look like to rent in today's market and also what it would look like to buy. That way you can have both options and make the best decision for you and your family. How does that sound? That sounds really good. Oh. <laughs> Look, Bone Crusher, <laughs> I told you, I don't want to sign today. Oh, oh that's oh. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom Paul, I understand. Um, what's, what, are, what, are, what are you hesitant about signing today for? You know, I really want to discuss it with my wife my uncle, and my cousin. <laughs> and I have two more interviews coming up. So after all three interviews, and after I talk to everyone, I'm ready and I'll call you. Okay, got it. So you want to talk to your wife, your cousin, your uncle, anybody else who's making a decision here? <laughs> that's, that's the one. You, you hit the nail on the head. Okay, got it. Well, I'd love to sit down with all you guys. We can get them on the phone right now if that works for you. We can talk to them, talk to all your options, and come up with a solution. How does that sound? Um, that sounds good. Only difference is I was waiting for two more um, uh, agents to come by and interview with you. Okay, when are they coming by? Uh, we have one tomorrow, and then we have one Saturday. Got it. And what's important to you about interviewing other agents? I just want to explore my options, get the best, you know, commission rates, mm -hmm. get the best price for my home, get the best marketing. <laughs> that sounds what, good. what do you think I'm missing? You know what? Honestly, that all sounds really reasonable. Um, you want to get a really good commission rate um, through an agent. You want to get the top amount for your home and you want to uh, it sounds like you want an agent who's really going to do their job really well is, is that yeah here? yeah for sure you know this is the first time i'm ever selling a home got it got it well you know tom paul i'm really big on education and i love working with first-time home buyers so um, i love to sit down with you for about 15 20 minutes um maybe lock this thing in we can go for our marketing strategy we can talk commissions and we can talk to all your family to make sure they're comfortable with it too how's that sound you drive a hard bargain, man. I think that sounds good. All right, cool. Let's <laughs> unlock this thing in. All right.
Okay, guys, so now we're going to vote. Uh, let's start with Keyshawn. Who, who wants to uh, see Keyshawn advance to the next round? Raise your hand. Yeah. 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 Transaction that I've done makes helps make your make your decision when choosing a realtor. Does it just matter? Uh, it would give you more confidence that you know what you're doing. Okay, what's more important, the amount of homes I've sold in the past, or how much money I'm going to net you when we sell yours? Okay, so Tiffany, what it sounds like, it sounds like you want to. You want somebody that's going to walk you through the process and make sure that they know what they're doing. And ultimately, you want to net top dollar for your home. Why don't we sit down for about 15 to 20 minutes and we can talk about what that process looks like. How does that sound? That sounds good. You just got booed! <laughs> I want to sleep on it before I make an offer. You want to sleep on it before you make an offer. Got it. Is there, what's holding you back from making an offer today? Uh, you know what? I, I truly value uh, my, my wife's and my parents' opinion. So I want to uh, check in with them before I do. Got it. You want to check in, check in with them before you make the offer. I mean, do you feel like they'll love the home as much as you do? I'm not sure, honestly. I have okay. to check with them, yeah. Okay, how about this? Because I would hate for you to miss out on such a beautiful home that we've seen today. How about I get the offer ready, right? And then tonight, you talk to your family, make sure they're on the same page as you, and I can get it sent out tonight and get it to over to the agent early tomorrow morning so you don't miss out on such a beautiful home, you and your family. Would that work? Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah. 
champion. Her objection handlers, her objection handlers handcuff lightning and throw lightning thunder in jail. No. Oh, bad woman. <laughs> I am win. Oh, that is uh, the picture from last year when you were the I don't know. Is it going to come off? We can be done right now. Give it to him. Objection, please. And uh, Monica, could you help me pick an objection? Excuse me, ladies. Oh, thank you. I know. My legs are sore from working out. I almost toppled over. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with the reigning champ, Miss Marita, the Italian stallion. Monica, could you please give us an objection handler? Hi, so I'm really just looking. I really like the home that I'm in. I'm just hanging out. Okay, um, let me ask you a question. What would it take to get you in the home of your dreams? What, it, what exactly are you looking for? What, what features? Uh, there are a lot of things that I like about my house. Uh, there are maybe a couple of things that I, I would appreciate more, maybe being a little closer to town, maybe a little uh, more landscape backyard or something, but I'm pretty happy where I am. Okay, well, usually people are looking because they're actually dreaming of buying a home. Why don't we sit down for about 15 minutes and I can help you at least explore that option. Would that work? All right, you've talked me into it. <laughs> Uh, I want to price my home higher. Ooh. Okay, Debbie, tell me a little bit more about that. Why do you want to price your home higher? Well, I, you know, I've done a lot of work in my home. I got you know, some wonderful upgrades. I painted, I painted everything. Uh, you know, I put some new carpet in there. So, you know, I just, just feel like my home is the best home on the block. Yeah, I truly believe you do have a beautiful home, and I agree. It is a really great home, and I do think we can get you top dollar for it, definitely. Um, why don't we sit down so that we, we can talk about it, I can take a look at the house and show you what I think your home is worth, and then, then we can discuss strategies and what it will take to market your property to net you top dollar and get you to your next home. And that's what you want, isn't it? Yeah, so if you can, can you, can you, can you, uh, can you list my home, like, $50,000 over asking price, how's that? So, there's two places we can list your home, Debra. We can list it to sit or we can list it to sell. Which would you prefer? Oh. <laughs> Andrew, how long have you been in the industry? 
in February? Well, we're taking my butt. So if, you, if you're inspired by him, guys, we have the script class every day. Uh, Jason puts that on for everybody. We appreciate Jason all their work. They're going there. There's a lot of agents doing that to perfect their objections and overcoming handling objections. Come be a part of that. Get that skill up because you want to be able to compete up here and feel good about it, right? Put Jason's or uh, put Andrew's face up here next year. Put your own face up there, okay? <laughs> All right, guys, that was a lot of fun. Was that fun? Yeah. yeah. Woo, that was fun. All right, we have some uh, announcements. Uh, Becky, do you want to come up and talk about the, the chili cook-off real quick? Put you on the spot? No? You want me to? I'll do it. All right, I'm already up here. Um, all right, got our chili cook-off. We're going to be having a lot of fun. We have costumes, office contests. Uh, we're going to be doing last year. Uh, George and Ileana and their teams made their offices amazing. One was Harry Potter and the candles were floating. We put them on Instagram. It was amazing. And then Ileana hid behind the door and scared the hell out of me when she came up and touched me with her Freddy claws. Really good as well. A lot of fun, guys. So participate in that. We had some prizes for that. We're going to have chili. We have, How many chilies do we have so far? Twelve. Twelve? We're going to wow. cap it at 20. So um, if we don't have, we have only so much space. We'll have 20, and then there's a $5 to come and enjoy the chili. That's all going to go to KW Cares for that $5, and it's not to come eat someone's full bowl of chili. It's to come to taste test their chili with the cup. Try all 20. You'll be nice and full. Vote for our best, and it'll be a lot of fun, okay? <laughs> Did I explain that all right? Yeah, and we can eat all the chili at the end. We can eat all the chili at the end, but let everyone try it yeah. all beforehand. Marvin, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Marvin is always the butt end of the joke, I mean, no matter what. So people are still um, able to enter. The yes. Uh, up front, right now. or scan this right now. Or if you're on Zoom or on Zoom, you can scan the code or uh, let. Uh, um, uh, Mondo know up front. He'll be able to take care of it. Yep, but we're gonna cap it at 20 because we just run out of room. It's, we don't have enough spots for chili mm -hmm. in Fletcher Awards. <laughs> All right. Um, Amy is going to be, Amy's in Texas. Um, she's going to be uh, speaking for uh, how her full women in business for NARREP that's coming up on November 2nd from 4 to 8 p.m. 4 to 8, 4 hours, is that right? It's four yes. hours? Uh -huh. She's only speaking an hour of it though? Or? Uh, she's in oh. exactly. Okay, panel, gotcha. I'm like, that's a four hour speech. Wow, that's a long speech. <laughs> um, I figure there's more to it. So, if you guys are interested in going, uh, come represent. We have a lot of, uh, NARREP, or we have our president here. We have all sorts of, we're very invested in that. We have, we have the president for NARREP and WCR now. Mm -hmm. we're, we're so popular. Um, so, come, come check it out. If you're a non member, it's $59. If you're a member, it's free. So, you might as well just get your membership and come support. Mm -hmm. We're doing this today too, or yes? No? Skip. Okay, skip, skip, skip. All right, we had a lot of fun. Yay! Now let's talk about the economy. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Oh, downer. I'm going to make this so much fun. You guys are going to be jumping up and down talking about the economy. All right, let's jump into it. So we, I do this for you guys so you guys can take notes. You get these slides every week so you can be the economist of choice for your clients, right? Right? Yes. right. Woo. Confident about what we're saying, what, what's going on in the market, right? Right. 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 You feel good? Yes. yes. Good. All right. Um, so this is the chief economist, First American, says when the economy is uncertainty, dust settles. Those buyers and sellers who were on the sideline will jump back in in the housing game. Demographic trend, uh, ten trends ooh, support elevated purchase demand in the years to come. So it is a question. It is it. So it's a question of when, if not if, for the housing market, right? So we expect that a downshift. It's going to be a tough year. It is. We'll get into that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but when the dust settles and interest rates come back down a little bit, we expect it to pick up again, right? Why? Why is that the common theme across the nation? Everybody's waiting. What else? What are we down 2.5 million on average right now for the last year? Housing. New homes. No homes. There's, just, there's no new homes across the nation. They made it impossible in California with regulations, right? You have to have solar, sprinklers, water, you can't find. Everything is so expensive to build that it outprices us. So there's been no new homes. So no new homes has kept supply low, right? So we expect once interest rates and things die down that there will be a demand again, okay? 
Um, in times of uncertainty, people follow the certain. Who said that like a week ago? The most certain, in the, uh, most certain person in the room wins. Brian. Brian did. Bolt coach. I love it. I like. I'm like so true. Right. In times of uncertainty, people follow the certain. Are you certain? Yes. 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 People will follow you then. Do your clients know you're certain? Yes. How? Confident certain. You tell them. <laughs> Beautiful. Most of you aren't, right? You have to tell your clients. You have to tell your friends. You have to be on social media. You have to send out emails. You have to send out market updates. You have to send out videos. Whatever you're doing to show that you're certain what's going on so people can trust you, okay? Uh, mortgage rates uh, rise at the sixth consecutive week. This is back of last or two weeks ago. You see our mortgage rates from the beginning of the year jumping up, jumping up, jumping up, jump up, 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 up. up. And on their way up to 6.1, uh, 6.7, up to 7 percent. Um, we've seen this, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. No surprise. Are any of you surprised? No. Nope. Nope. Why are we surprised? Because the Fed's keeping rising prices. Fed's keeping rising prices. Why was that? The CPI came out uh, last week, and it was still up. Like the CPI. What is the CPI? Consumer price index. What does that mean? Inflation still going up. Still going up. But what does that mean? People are still spending money. Well, you can include energy and gas. There's two CPIs you can look at. But yes, so just pretend you go to Costco and you have the world's biggest shopping cart and you put everything in it that you could possibly get. Well, now it's going to be 8% higher than it was last year or 9% higher or 10% higher, right? Most of the average people in the world don't get a 10%, a 12%, a 30% raise every year, right? So when, when the interest keeps going up, I'm sorry, not um, um, when inflation, thank you, keeps going up, salaries don't tend to fall on that same level, right? So everything is, is less affordable, it causes problems, okay? So the 30-year fix, actual and projected for 2023 based off Freddie Mac, um, what they're projecting is it to still peak a little bit more and then to flatten out over time and even come down over next year, all right? So what are we watching like crazy to see if that's true? You said it, the CPI, right? Consumer price index. We want to see what's going on with that. If that continues to be high, we expect that to continue to go up. All right, so here's the consumer price index. Um, from back from 2002 all the way to 2022, right? So you've seen our inflation been pretty under control. The government wants 2%. 2% is really good. They want 2%. That's the goal. So you see where it peaks and the ebbs and flows. You can, I guarantee if you put an interest rate up here, you'd see it peak and flowing with this as well, right? And then we've been in scary zone, above the line of scary zone, right? So we've been in scary zone for a long time. We've kind of peaked down a little bit at 8.2%. Um, doesn't mean it's over. Doesn't mean that that's okay, that we're just gonna stop. So we can see interest rates continue to go up over the next few months, okay? Does everyone get that? Does it, we can explain that to our clients? No. There's some good news in when it's all said and done. No? Can I say anything to better to make that make more sense? Is there a, what, what's, what's confusing on, what can I help with? Because you're saying it, I'm sure other people are feeling it. Anybody else feeling it? Yeah. 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 Can you just explain, explain it, again? it again? Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> without the word. Without the words. <laughs> last year. Zero. Zero. Last year at this time, if you were to go to Costco, it would have cost you about 8.2 percent less. Okay. This year it's 8.2 percent more. It's so almost 10 percent. Yeah. So if I'm going to spend. When you go to Costco, you're like, I'm just going to get $100 worth of stuff and uh -oh. $7,000 later <laughs> because, oh my gosh, you can't do that at Costco. It's now going to be about 8 to 9% more for the same exact stuff that we bought. Okay? And one of the, the key things for the federal government, um, democracy, the only things that could destroy democracy that easily and quickly is rapid inflation. Um, inflation gets so crazy, people can't afford anything. Um, it can destroy democracies. That's why the Fed's in place to help stop rapid inflation. How they do that is they tell Americans to stop spending money. <laughs> yeah. Stop. So we're going to make it really hard to buy, or harder to buy a home and to loan money on, buy cars by the raising the rates. And it works. Typically, they go too far one way or the other, and you'll see that it'll probably 
it causes a recession, which we're in, right? That's okay though, because it cycles and it happens over time. So we'll get into that as well. So, while even two months ago, rates above 7% may have seemed unthinkable, at the current pace, we can expect rates to surpass that level in the next three months. That's a senior economist at Realtor.com. I read this and I think, how do you become a senior economist at Realtor.com if you thought 7% was unthinkable two months ago? What did we say three months ago? Like 9 Yeah. 9 10%. Ouch. I'm going to apply for that job. How is that unthinkable? Like, that's exactly what it looked, was going to happen. And we were so like, it would go up to 9%. How soon until we hit 9%? How soon? Yeah. I, if I just watch the super price index, if it's still at eight or nine, it's going to jump up again to the eight. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. Your guess. The end My guess. Yes. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not the senior economist, so I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I would. I would guess that it's going to be quicker because they're going to wrap it up like they did. They went hard this last time just to get people because this number or this number was not coming down. It kept going up, and they kept like, oh, it's going to be okay. And so they wrapped it up hard to make that number come down. So next month, if it comes out again in the 8 to 9%, I would bet I would bet we'd be up to the 75 to 8% by next month, maybe in a couple weeks. It just all depends on what that number is. If that number is back down, and it's like 6, and it's cruising down, I would be my flat now. But I'm not a professional. I can't, say, I can't predict March. the future. It will be by March. <laughs> I can't predict the future, but I would expect it to keep going up. I think it'll be much faster than that if it does happen, but we'll see. We'll see how things go. Uh, okay, uh, supply-demand ratio changing quickly. All right, so showings is based off showing time, which is a, a Zillow app that they use in a lot of uh, the country. So they can see how often people are showing. They take that data um, and they use it. And versus active listings. So showings are down about 12.2% while active listings are up almost 27%, all right? We're all feeling that? Yeah? Yes. Yes, okay. We're not any different? So Ivy Zillman projects U.S. house prices will fall 4% 2023 and then another 5% decline in 2024. 4% decline, a 5% decline. This is quite a bit um, different than a lot of the other economists. They have been saying that we're going to be flat, even a four to three percent gain in the housing prices, compared to where we've been at like twenty percent, which has been insane. Uh, which I have here in a second. Not surprisingly, deals are not getting done, with sales of new and existing homes declining uh, for over half a year. Given that the demand is cooling due to the high borrowing costs, incomes falling behind inflation, and the still limited supply pipeline, it's becoming increasingly clear that prices have to decline to restore market li uh, liquidity and balance. <laughs> Are we seeing price reductions? Oh, yeah. Of course, right? This is just reaffirming where we're at. So this is the home forecast for 2023. Um, so remember, at the beginning of the year, guys, we were still pretty hot. So we were still up like 20%, 20%, 20%. Um, but we start to go the other direction, right? So you can see Fannie, Freddie, uh, NBA, HPES, NAR, they're all expecting that price to be coming down. More of a hit towards the end of the year. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's 2023, we're looking at only one person is really expecting the prices to come down year over year over last year, over this year, which is somewhat surprising to me. We'll see what happens um, because the supply is still so low. Sometimes I feel like these numbers are positive to keep people feeling good. Energized. Yes. That's is that. So the um, these are last time it was like these are not these are these are their numbers, right? So it's not like and it to me it feels that way as well because I feel like I've been more doom and gloom and so far I've been right. Does it mean? that they're right. Gary Keller's more doom and gloom, so he's not doom and gloom. He's just projecting what he's seeing off the future and what he stuffs. So their numbers seem high to me. I would expect next year we're down almost 20 to 30 percent over the year in sales total. So prices may remain stagnant, maybe a little bit lower. So this year we're going to do about, or last year we did about 6.1 million in sales across the nation. Okay. So 6.1 million. Um, back in 2005, 2006, in 2006, right when the recession officially hit, uh, the end of the fourth quarter, we did about 6.5 million in sales. The very next year, as prices started to decline and the recession hit, we did 4.2 million in sales, which was like a 34, whatever it is, 35% decline in sales total. So 
based off those numbers in the past few times we've hit a recession, what that looked like in the sales totals, uh, we could expect to be down about 25% in sales totals overall. That makes sense? So what will that do with prices and how much will that affect? We don't know for certain. But I feel exactly like you do. Sometimes it seems like they're trying to be like too positive so people are optimistic, optimistic about you know what's going to happen. So but we'll see. Um, appreciation, depreciation forecast for 2023. So these are based off of, um, there's a number of uh, economists that they surveyed and the percentage of people that think it's going to appreciate or depreciate over the next year in housing prices. You see most of the economists feel that it's going to appreciate between 3 and 5%. Most professional economists. What are, they, what are their, I don't know their sources, I don't know who they are, but there is still a good amount of group that think it is going to come down in pricing. Have they ever been wrong? <laughs> I don't know. You know, just like me, I don't know. I tell my wife all the time, you know, one, one day I will be wrong and we'll, we'll figure out it then, but. <laughs> she likes it. She's like, you never can admit when you're wrong. I'm like, when I'm, the opportunity to rise is, I will. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just one day it'll happen. Meaning asking prices for rent since 1988. This is just for you, just for you to use, right? Rent's just skyrocketing as well. So a lot of people are talking about affordability and buying a home. Rent hasn't gone down because there's still no, there's still no a lot of uh, affordable homes where people are buying up and renting out to bring down those prices, right? Mm -hmm. There hasn't been any new built in a long time, so rent is still going up and up and up and up. Yeah? Where can we get that chart? You're gonna get everything sent to your email. At, Mike sends it, uh, normally by the end of the day, right? Later today. Yeah, he normally sends it, just keep an eye, eye out for you to use. And this is uh, US average, right? This is US average. This is according to the Census Bureau. Got it. I always source my material when I steal this from somebody else. Um, okay. <laughs> Existing home sales. So according to NAR, uh, year over year by region, we're down about 20% existing home sales. The Northeast is down 13, Midwest 15 or 16, South 19. Uh, the West is still down about 30%. So this is existing home sales. This is tell us what's happening. I always like to look what, to see what's coming. Pending home sales. It's exactly the same. Um, we're pending towards still uh, about 24% and the West about 31% down. Do you guys know where we're kind of at locally in uh, amount of sales down so far, the last few months? Year over year, it's it's not as bad, but if you go the last few months, we've been trending about 30% down, almost exactly what this number is, um, in year over year sales. So Gab, are we normally, we'll get, we'll, we'll come up. All right, so let's do local numbers real quick, and we'll do some awards in here. So this is just Gavar, right? Our active listings kind of flattened out in August. Um, our new listings have come down, and our sold listings have been flat. We flattened out here. The new listings come on, they kind of flattened out. We're not getting a ton more listings. Um, people are kind of hesitant, right? And at certain times, people freeze. Okay. Uh, listing prices, you see our listing prices, our active medium list price has come down and kind of been flat this last month. New medium list price, we kind of jumped up a little bit, was interesting. Uh, see where that continues in the sold medium sales price actually jumped up a little bit from last month as well. So that's too, too close to say a trend or anything. It might just been more higher price homes sold that month. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Absorption rate. Uh, absorption rate, obviously, we've hit the 2.5 months. We've kind of slowed down and we took a lot less listings this last month. So our absorption rate hasn't jumped up much more, but it's climbed just about the same much about the listings we take. Make sense? Yes. We know what the absorption rate is. We talk about it all the time. Right. Okay. Um, and then our sold to list price ratio, you're still almost 99% of the sales price to list price. So price cuts, price cuts are happening. Happening, that number is going to keep coming down as more and more price cuts happen. Uh, but we're still averaging about 99% of the uh, sales price to list price. Right? Mm -hmm. But remember, if you reduce the price and you get a price offer, it's that reduced price sales price, right? It's not, that doesn't include the reductions. It's not original list price ratio. Make sense? Okay, just want to clarify that. Days on market, we're kind of plateauing right around the 40 days on market. All right, and it jumped up quite a bit in July and June, um, and then August, it kind of, and then back up in September. We're filling that with our listings, taking longer to sell? Yes. Yeah, okay. To what? Listings longer to sell? Yeah. 
Margaret, I had a joke about you earlier, but you weren't here to enjoy it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind, always. It was more fun here than in court. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's look at our summary statistics real quick. Um, so we look at our absorption rate. It's up over 43% year um, from month over month. And then year over year, it's up 45% because we're on that continued trend of our absorption rate climbing. Our median list price at 479 this month. Last year at this time, it was 449. So you see, we're still averaging our prices about 7% higher than we were this time last year. So this is good information because if someone's upset or, oh, I should have sold, I just missed the bubble. Well, no, you didn't. If you try to sell this time last year, you're, you're still at a higher percentage. Even if we bring it down, we could be right at last year's prices and you would have been happy last year. Oh, I got multiple offers, everything's great. You still could almost get those prices, right? You're just coming back down to where you're at. Uh, average sales price at 478.9. Oh, did I skip? I did. I did list. Four seven. Oh, yeah, same price. Uh, so we're about 4% higher on our average sales price month over month. Year over year, our average, our medium sales price, we're at 450. We're at 418 last year, about 8% incline. So year over year, we're still 8% higher than we were last year on our sales price, even though we're reducing prices right now. So we'll see what happens over the next few months. That might drive that number lower. But when the economy, uh, a lot of those um, that we were feeling that being positive about, at the beginning of the year, they said they thought it was going to be about 6% um, uh, of the prices increasing year over year. So they, they were pretty accurate for where we're standing right about now. We'll see what happens over next year, though. Make sense? <laughs> Is there any questions on this section that I could clarify more to help you guys out more? We all get this? Yeah. Okay. We hit our marketing tab at the first of the month so we can see what's going on in the market. In flex. Okay, we have a marketing, we have a marketing tab? What is that? Um, okay, I just want to show this real quick because this is the real interesting part about um, sold our numbers when I was talking about where we're at. We're down about 12% year to date in our total sales. Okay? Our pending sales are down about 17%, which means we're heading down. We're heading down, right? So if you go month over month, we're down 27%, so almost 30% number that we talked about that I said we're, we're right on track, and 38% year over year, or I mean pending. So next month looking like it's going to be down. lower. Okay, so is it scary? No, no, no. There's always an opportunity in any market, right? right. Yep. The fact is, there's going to be 25% less deals to be had next year. So this is why we've been doing bold. This is why we've been bringing this stuff to you guys to really get into massive action because we want you guys to survive this little uh, and then when the market picks back up, you're ready to thrive. Why will the market pick back up next year? Creative financing. Interest rates will come up. Down. Why do I, why am I confident in that? Why am I confident? Because the last five recessions, every single time coming out of the recession, they've lowered interest rate to get the economy out of the recession. How's the longest recorded recession that we've had? How many months? 18 months. We're already on six months. So I'm pretty confident saying by this time next year, interest rates are going to be lower because in history showed us that's exactly what's happened the last five times. Sound good? Yes. yes. Sounds good. So take confidence. Get your butts into action. Let's kick butt this next year. Survive this little downturn. Put some money away. Save up. And then when that market gets kicking butt and there's a lot less competition because the other agents that did do the work, they're, they're now working at Costco or somewhere different. Mm -hmm. Just staring at you. That's why I said it. I don't know why. Sorry. I don't know why. Sorry. Sorry. This guy is the hardest worker and he's made more money in real estate than most of the people in this room. And I just and he's like doesn't sleep because he just works nights over there to make extra money. I'm like, dude, you're crazy. I was just fine. I'm sorry. I think that <laughs> I looked at you because I saw you sleeping earlier. Alright. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed you. Are you handing them out? Yes. Okay. All right, so let's do our awards. Um, okay, let's get going with the listings tape, you guys. If you want to come up, I'm just trying to think the easiest way to, should we hand them out? Okay, we'll hand it to you. That'll be easier because there's, we don't have an easy thing. 
Let's we'll stand up, make it easy. All right, top individuals, listings taken, third quarter awards. This is for the quarter. Uh, celebrate you guys' successes. In fifth place, we got James Bauer and Monica. Uh, they did a great job, Monica. James out there in Ridgecrest doing a great job. In fourth place, we got Becky Lowe with 11. Uh, Lose and Mr. Mike Watson with 12. Oh, Great job, Mike. And in second place, Christine Meister out there, who's best with 14 missions. In first place, we got Jessica Dixon. Oh, Great job, everybody. All right, top individual agents, gross commission income, GCI. Let's see how much money they made. And fifth place, Zach Sprague with $118,000. That's amazing. I feel bad for everybody made $150,000 in a quarter. And we don't even get to celebrate them. All right, in fourth place, we've got Christine Meister with $140,000 in GCI. Great job, Christine. And in second place, third place, Becky Lowe with 151. Great job, Becky. In second place, we have Mike Watson with 1.75. And in first place, we have Jessica Dixon with 178,000. Great job, Jess. Great job, everybody. All right, let's look at the, the team listings taken. Uh, third place, we got the Chapel Team Advantage with 12 listings taken. All the scripts paid off. Both pressure over there. In second place, we got Eliana Dominguez with 16. 
Titans on Zoom. She's not gonna say anything though, she's shy. In first place we got Pulaski 47. <laughs> <Boom. Whoa. laughs> <laughs> 47. Uh, someone's lying. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, man. Alright, top closed units um, for listings tickets. Alright. Top closed units we have Ilion at 12.5. Great job, Ilion. <laughs> Second place, we got the Chapel team with 14. <laughs> and in first place, we got the Plastic. <laughs> The, the Plastics team's like, what? Slow down. We see no slow down? What are you guys talking about? We see a speed up. Top teams, closed volume, third quarter. We got Aguilar in the A team at 4.6 million. Great job, man. So that's And in second place, we got the Chapel team with 5.1 million. And in first place, we got the Plastic 19. You know, one time I actually worked at an orange juice facility. I got fired though. They said I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> All right, top teams: GCI, third quarter. Aguilar, the A team, one hundred sixteen thousand dollars. Great job, uh, Antoinette. And in second place, we got the Chapel team advantage, one hundred forty-two thousand. GCI. Wonder who the winner is. <laughs> 17 million in volume. We got Tom Plath. <laughs> Cortino's here. She's going to be talking about. She set off an alarm. She's no. running back in to get so fast. Uh -huh. uh, she's going to be. She provided lunch. She's supposed to be back any second now. She has her thing set up. Uh, she's going to give her a little speech here in a second. Is she not out there? No. Okay. All right. So once there was this uh, guy. <laughs> what other jokes do I got? Yeah, it was a fish that runs into a wall. Everyone knows that one. Damn. You test the knives. You test the knives? Just throw them at the wall, see how they stick? Oh. <laughs> well, I, I did, actually, am I early? You know what? I'm five minutes early because I told her, no, we told her right at 11? 11.15. Oh, I, I went quick on the awards, and I was looking at the clock, and that clock is five minutes fast. Oh, oh man. So let's be polite because she brought us food. Let's not leave. Um, she just something. Give her a she just something, Gary. All right, what do you guys want to know? Kind of <laughs> <laughs> Sandwiches. It's good food. It's worth waiting. It's worth waiting for. All right. Uh, who wants to know something? Ask me a question. I have a question, actually. Sure. Uh, so, 18 months on August recession, how long did it take before the first two quarters to actually believe the rest of America believes we're in a recession? <laughs> So, uh, so uh, there's a lot of political spinning that goes on when it comes to, right, because it's all about power and politics, so whoever's in charge when a recession. Um, so to be fair, we've been in a 12-month uh, recovery for, and that's the longest re recorded recovery since our last recession. Typically cycles happen. Mm -hmm. So when, when uh, not to be political, I don't care what you like or don't like, I'm not, I'm just saying what it is, so don't get mad at me. Sound like it is. Um, so when, when Trump was in office, right, they did a big tax cut, which was great for all of us, right, and they kept interest rates low, and every time the Fed tried to raise interest rates to slow down the economy, he would, like, Trump on him, you know, he's like, ah! Trump, right, and that was great, it was great for us, but we knew this was going to happen, right, so we knew it was going to decline. So typically, any economist, if you Google, like, what is a recession? What what happens in recession? How do you tell a recession? It's GDP in decline for two consecutive quarters. It's always been that way, right? 
Well, until now. Uh, until now. <laughs> right now, the, the things aren't going well for the current president, and so they're just spinning like crazy. Well, it's not really a recession because unemployment's really, you know, no, it's GDP down two quarters in a row. So, how much does that impact us? Right now, they consider uh, COVID 2020 a recession. I'm like, okay, because GDP was down two quarters in a row. We shut down the country. Yeah. And then it jumped back up. Mm -hmm. So that is considered a recession if you look back historically. So for how much is it going to impact and how the, and there's been a lot of recessions where the price points don't come down. There's been a lot of recessions where things are just stagnant for a while because it's just a little hiccup in the road and eventually climbs up. So how long does America, it, when it affects you in the pocket is when people feel it. I think people, every time they go to the gas pumps right now, they're feeling it at a much higher level. So people are willing to admit it more readily, right? When they go to the grocery store, yeah, right? And all of a sudden there's like five hot dogs in the pack and you're like, but it's the same price, like, but they only put five in the pack. Like it, you notice these things that are happening. Toilet paper is smaller. Yeah. Yeah. I did notice that. They're trying to keep the prices the same. Constantly <laughs> <laughs> change your formula. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's because it's a marketing well, thing, right? It's an expert. A, yeah. It's a, small now. It's, yeah. it's a marketing thing in there. So Just it's hard to say, um, but being kind of the voice of reason of what's going on, at the end of the day, depending on what's going on, there's still opportunity in buying and selling real estate. And, and no matter what market, there's always going to be opportunity to buy and sell. Even if you bought the worst possible time in 2006, right before, you still made good money on it if you held on to it and you could afford the payment all the way through. Uh, so being the economist of choice, helping people through that understanding, like saying, this is a recession, this is a recession. Um, a thing I did for recruiting, I don't know, six, seven months ago, eight months ago, is um, I used interest yields to kind of say, hey, recession's going to happen, it's going to happen. And I put it out there. And I'm like, well, it's not going to be a recession because this is, I'm like, it's going to happen, right? And then it, boom, it happened, right? And then there's credibility with that and credibility of being, letting people know, like, look, this is the past, what's happened. Most likely this is going to happen again. So there's credibility through, makes you more credible with the people. Using, everything you guys see is stuff I just go, I'm not creating these charts. I'm just researching a little bit, getting other people's information, and then putting it out in front of you, right? So it's not like I'm creating it or I'm being, you know, I'm an economist and I know all this stuff. I don't. I just look at it, oh, that's interesting, right? And then I listen to people that are smarter than me, oh, that's interesting, and then I bring it back. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Did I ramble on enough to have her show up in time? No. Next question. You got two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. Next question. This is the right time. You know, I talked to a client of mine, and I was asking her what would be one question that she would have uh, regarding real estate. And she said, well, most, what I hear most is I want to know why would it be good to buy or what it would be good to, stay, uh, to wait. What's the, what's the, um, the benefit of buying, of buying or not buying? So I, it, it always goes back to the individual, right? It always depends. But no matter what over time is, is the market does this over time. It doesn't, and most, if you draw this for your clients, most people think it does this, right? And they're like, I wanna, I wanna buy here and sell here. Well, even if you buy here or here or here, if you hold it to here, you're okay. Because the market always goes up 4% on average year over year. So you have to go into really like, why is it a good time to buy or to rent? A lot of times, simple math will just prove it. What are you paying in rent? Let's see other options. Is, it, is rent another option? Is she asking buy or rent? No, she is said she? that what I hear the most is, uh, what people want to hear the most is the reason why they would buy now or why they shouldn't buy now. Whether it's uh, investor or just yeah. to live in it. Yeah, that's a general question. Yeah, I didn't. You didn't go. It, it's always you always got to go into the need, right? right. And you got to dive in and ask right. the questions. What's the true need? Exactly. Why? Uh, what? What are you what, trying to do? Well, I, what are you trying to provide? Yeah. I and haven't answered her yet. So the value yeah. of, of owning real estate, there's uh, control. You get control of the asset, right? right? Where when you're renting, you have no control over what happens with the house. If you're gonna fix it up, if you're gonna sell it, if you're gonna rent it to someone else, if you're gonna rent one room, you're gonna rent the house for a month, you have no control over that rental, right? right? But when you buy, you have control. Mm -hmm. When you put a certain amount down, like 20%, and if you're smart about getting a good interest rate on how to do that, then when you look at the house versus a rental, you're gonna actually pay about the same 
for the, a similar property in rent versus owning. Your payment's gonna be very similar. Mm -hmm. So now you're paying 100% interest on a rental as opposed to earning equity, paying mm -hmm. seven, five to seven percent on owning a home. That's the value, that's the reason, not only that, but what's your tax benefit yeah, for renting a home as opposed to buying a home? Well, if you are an investor, you get depreciation. Or if you're a homeowner, of course, you get to write off the interest. So you have a lot more benefits. And right now, it's very common to rent out one room. Mm -hmm. Rents are high. You rent out one room for a thousand bucks a month. Mm -hmm. You know that could be a fourth of your payment, or even more. Yeah. So it, there's it, a lot of benefits to owning yeah. as opposed the to the tax rent. benefit that you're talking about. Most people, the, the mortgage is their single greatest tax benefit, and that's something that's missed a lot. And it's a good point because if you look at that. Um, of the tax rate of what you're paying, that is that is a, you get a significant chunk of that, you get the interest, right, as a write-off. And typically your first, you pay only interest in your first 15 years of a loan. So you most of your payments get to be a write-off for your first 15 years of a loan. Make sense? So yeah, it's a great time to buy today. Save on the interest that you get as a write-off. And when rates do come down and we expect it over the next year to get us out of the recession, we can refinance and do a better rate. It's a win -win. equity that you already It's a win-win. Does anyone know roughly, like anyone have a, a, a rough estimate? I mean, we could calculate it, but how much they do save in the tax write-off for interest? It depends on your tax bracket. Yeah. Yeah, so but you do the amount they get, though. So the amount that they get that they could use, right? It, it depends, right, on the sales price. What, so what's our, um, what is our amount of taxes that they could do? Like, do you know the um, uh, tax rate? Your your interest rate. I'm sorry, not taxes. <clears throat> the interest, right? So the interest they get a write off, right? Right. right. And when you do a loan, mm -hmm. the interest is all in the beginning, correct? Yeah. They're paying just basically towards interest. Mm -hmm. So depending on what their payment is, it's very close to being what their payment is each month that they'll actually be able to use for a write off towards their taxes, roughly for the first couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. And then each year it goes down as they pay off more of their loan. So it really is something you can calculate somewhat clicky roundabout as a, um, so if someone's buying a $400,000 house, they're gonna have a $3,000 payment, three and 12, you can give like, look, that could be towards your taxes yeah. to bring down your taxes. That might put you in a lower bracket. Right. You might save money by paying- Could be five or $10,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's with the rates the way they are and how high the purchase price is. Easily. easily. You can write off the property tax too. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. the property yeah. tax at the 4,000 yeah. or the 5,000 each month. So there is a lot of benefits that could outweigh that 7% interest rate. But if you just show the math. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm out of stalling tactics. Can I give flyers? Can I give flyers out? She's in the parking lot? Yeah, give flyers out. Um, I have a Saturday lunch. I'm going to do tacos. Oh, oh, man. And, to get food, you got to be in the room for dinner. Tacos. We're going to have green sauce. I'm going to have fire. Tacos and pan dulce. And I'm going to make my famous enchiladas too. Oh! Oh, you give me Best elevator speech I've ever heard about saying what she does quickly to people and 
take notes, see how she does her presentation, and think how can I be better. So let's welcome the only Miss Martino, Mrs. Martino. the food will be worth it, it is here. <laughs> okay, so again, my name is Deanna Scortina. You guys can call me D if you want to. And again, some of you know, you meet a lot of people. So if directors Martin Scorsese and Quentin Tarantino had a baby, that would be me, Scortino. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they're both my dad. <laughs> Nowadays, you never know. <laughs> anyway, so now you guys can remember. So, just so I know, where do I look? Where's the camera here? Oh, yeah, let me. You just can so just, I'm yeah, Zoom. You're just weirdly on Zoom. Don't okay, worry no, that's it. fine. That's, that works. Okay. So, what we do is we specialize in helping you guys with your client appreciation, but more so your client retention. Check out this statistic only 9% of the population can name their realtor after two years. 9% can remember who you are. So if you guys don't have an active system in place for your business that's consistently reminding people of who you are and what you do for them long term, this is definitely something you do want to check out. And we happen to do it with an incredible product called Cutco. Now by show of hands, who in the room is familiar with Cutco or Cutco Closing Gifts? Awesome. Keep your hands up if you own Cutco yourself. Awesome. Keep your hands up if you've had it five years. 10, 15, let's see. Oh, nice, man. My parents had it forever. Love it. Yeah. Super cool. Okay, good. So that's exactly why we are the largest closing gift company in America, you guys. See, what happened was a lot of realtors were just getting tired of giving consumable gifts. Gift cards, baskets, wine, maybe a puppy. <laughs> These things are awesome. I love all of them. But aside from a puppy, where are most of the gifts given after you've given them? They're gone, spent, drank. Like, if the gift isn't doing anything for your client in the long term, is it really helping you with your business at all? No. Unfortunately, no, and you already spent the money. So with Cutco, we found a classy way to brand you. And if you guys aren't familiar with Cutco, Cutco's like the Rolls Royce, the Bentley, of extremely high end things made for the kitchen and the home, just like snap-on tools. It's guaranteed forever. They do free sharpening and all that jazz, you know. Where is this made? America. 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 Love it. Who does that? <laughs> Who makes something here? <laughs> Silly people. I love it. Okay, so we engrave it as well with your information. So this creates some big advantages for you guys. So for example, instead of you know anything else that you can you know what's the tax benefit actually just let me ask what's the irs allowment per closing gift what's the amount $25. very good you guys have been trained well 25 dollars <laughs> all you can write off now i'm not going to have you raise your hands to see who's writing off only 25 dollars on their tax <laughs> yes. because i'm sure we're all really ethical when it yes. comes to doing those <laughs> yes because these are great those such as your sharpest realtor in town name a number Stop cutting my commissions, <laughs> whatever you want. I know, that was right. So, but legally, what can you shift that cost over to now? Marketing. Marketing, yes, right, I'm 100% of your gifts now. So no need to get creative at tax time anymore. Obviously, consult your tax professional. Yeah. That is not me. Okay. <laughs> so, and also, if you guys are going to listen to anything I have to say, this is a tip. I don't know if I've actually given this group before, but this is one of the best value add things I can tell you to do. Referral, sphere of influence, friends and family, end of the year client appreciation. Oh, wait, we're there. And the best tip I can give you, one, two, three year home anniversary gifts. If you guys have been in this business longer than one year and you're not capitalizing on those people yet, you're missing a huge opportunity. I have an agent, she gives these out to her one and two year home anniversaries and she goes, Deanna, I don't understand why more agents don't do this. I go, well, please tell me why. She said, because, first of all, when it comes to them, it makes a huge impact. You guys know they've never been in their, they never remember they've been in their house a year. They're like, oh, it's been a year already, I had no idea, right? <laughs> So it makes a huge impact because they don't expect it, okay? Number two, Deanna, what are they one, two, and three years closer to doing all over again? Moving again. Exactly, selling, moving, buying. That's when I want to be top of mind, not just at closing. She's smart, I would implement that right away. Yup. <laughs> yeah. So that being said, how do closing gifts, back to the closing gift end of things, how do they usually go? You run all over town, trying to find the right gift for somebody, it's all last minute, 
OMG, am I going to give a bottle of wine to an alcoholic? <laughs> let's yeah, find works. out. <laughs> Just kidding, let's not. The thing is, you guys need to stop overthinking your guests. Two things are true. How many things? Two. 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 Yep. All your clients have a kitchen, and number two, they all eat food. <laughs> I know I'm always blown away by the second one. So if you guys want to get really creative, you can always pair these with other things. I totally get it. But at the end of the day, you guys know, the longer you've been in this business, you guys saw the people who've eaten awards, the more systems you need. Yes or yes? Yes. yes. Exactly. So that's why PW is our number one client nationwide, because you guys are all about systems, and we love you for that. And speaking of that, we like are just like business cards. You would never buy a business card. <laughs> That'd be really funny. But I'm also not gonna get you 500 gifts like 500 business cards come. Let me back up. You can, my manager would definitely not say no, but most of our agents do this. Our minimum order is six gifts. How many? Six. six. Good. We ship them to you right away, and then we bill you over six months or even a whole year for however many you need. So, math lesson of the day. If you guys got 12 gifts, in one year, and we bill you over 12 months, how many gifts are you paying for each month? One. 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 Exactly. So budget friendly, and we go anywhere from about 70 bucks. You can pay for 12 a month, I heard that. That's totally fine. <laughs> 144 gifts for him. So basically, you guys can do that over uh, the whole year if you want. But we go from about 70 bucks to 250 and we find that's what most of you are already spending on your clients so maybe even more we can keep it easy like that all right so here's what we're going to do i always some of you know this i love to reward people who take action on things now that they see themselves doing eventually or anyway so obviously we have lunch okay but i'm going to do something special for you guys so because we're half zoom half in person this is always a fun thing but those of you in person and on Zoom, what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you take your cell phone out, okay? This is what we're doing instead of a business card. So take your cell phone out and open up your text message app, all right? So I'm, I'll give you my number in a second, but open up your text message app and then wave your phone in front of me so I can see your phone. Great, those on Zoom, you can just wave your hand if you're on the phone. Okay, good, love it. So here's what we're gonna do. There's two instructions I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys. So first of all, for the first four people today, how many? Four. four. You guys are getting the hang of it. Four <laughs> that place a new order or a reorder today. I'm gonna get you guys half price engraving and not only is that good for your order today, but all your future orders as well. You are grandfathered in for life, half price engraving for life. Also, all of you on your seat probably got a little coupon for $100 of free Cutco. You will also get that with your order today too for, the, for, those, for those first four, okay? So in these first four, you guys, it's like if you have maybe some closings coming up, some people to appreciate your business, a lot of you guys have been asking me about end of the year client appreciation. We have a way we can mail all your gifts out for you or hand deliver them or mail them to you so you can hand deliver. If that's you and you're like, hey, I need to get started, I need a system, let's do this, definitely see me and do this instruction, okay? So the first people are, the, if you want to be part of those first four, one, it's get started today. Name, email, I'll give you my number in a second. Name, email, and I'm in, all right? Name, email, I'm in. Or if you just want general information, you're like, this seems interesting, I'm not ready yet, but I kind of want some general info, name and email. There's a lot of you in one of me, so this will just help me kind of help you guys out. So if you want to be part of those first four to get that 50% off engraving for life and $100 of free cut code with your order today, name, email, I'm in, or general information, name, email. My number is 323-687-8287. Thank you, Marvin. 323-687-8287. <laughs> Marvin cheated, he had your number already. I know, some of you are gonna get fat there faster, so. We'll see about you later. So, 823-687-8287. Name, email, I'm in if you wanna get started today, but part of those first four people, or in general, name, email, if you just want general information, I'm super down to help you guys too. And I will leave you with this quote before you go on to lunch. Remember, 
It is not your client's job to remember you. It is your duty and full obligation to ensure they never ever have a chance of forgetting who you are. So get that system in place, baby. I'll see you in the back. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, guys, looks like you got some food over there. Um, I guess, yeah, go ahead and help yourself. I'm not sure how the flow's going to work. Maybe just make your way. Make a line and kind of do a U and out. Yeah, you got to go around because the food's set up. Oh, that's so Thank you.